Hello, I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Merry Christmas, everybody. Thanks for watching TCM, where our Christmas marathon ended abruptly with our last movie, which I picked, The Bridge on the River Kwai. It's many things, but it's no Christmas movie. Our hosts have been programming double features each Saturday night this month. The Bridge on the River Kwai won the best picture for 1957. That part does not interest me. Very few of my favorite movies win Oscars. The year of its release is what inspired my choices tonight. I've had the honor, privilege, the thrill of working at TCM for better than 18 years. That's nearly two decades of referring to 1939 as Hollywood's greatest year. Recently, I've started to cut down on the hyperbole, saying 1939 is the year many consider Hollywood's best. I'm not in that camp. The movies I've chosen tonight are both from 1957, which I believe is Hollywood's best year, even though the studio system was nearing its end. In addition to The Bridge on the River Kwai, you've got Paths of Glory, Sweet Smell of Success, A Face in the Crowd, Twelve Angry Men, and there's a second tier of really good pictures. Desk Set, Peyton Place, An Affair to Remember, Gunfight at the OK Corral, 310 to Yuma, The Spirit of St. Louis, plus some great foreign films. Obviously, those aren't from Hollywood. Knights of Kiberia, Throne of Blood, The Seventh Seal, Wild Strawberries. And then there's our next film, directed by Billy Wilder, co-written by Wilder and Harry Kernitz. This is a gripping courtroom classic, Witness for the Prosecution, based on a play by Agatha Christie. Jerome Power is accused of murdering a wealthy widow. Charles Lawton plays one of his most memorable characters, an aging, irritable, and brilliant lawyer who, despite his failing health, agrees to defend power. Elsa Lanchester, married to Lawton for 30 years, has a wonderful role in the picture as Lawton's attentive, overly attentive nurse. But the most critical part belongs to Marlena Dietrich as Power's wife. She and Billy Wilder were old friends, both Hollywood imports, Dietrich from Germany, Wilder from Austria. They made their first picture in 1948, A Foreign Affair. This film, their second together, came nine years later. Wilder was hesitant to make the movie. Dietrich talked him into it, and he promptly cast her. More on the decisions he made about her character after the movie. From United Artists in 1957, once again, Hollywood's best year, witness for the prosecution. Once Marlena Dietrich was cast as Tyrone Power's wife and witness for the prosecution, the part was largely reworked from the original Agatha Christie play by director Billy Wilder and Harry Kernitz, who co-wrote the screenplay together. As Dietrich and Wilder were old friends, Wilder tailored the role to Dietrich's singular abilities. For her disguise as the Cockney woman, playwright Noel Coward coached Dietrich on her Cockney accent. It's not easy to teach Cockney to a German glamour puss who can't pronounce her R's, said Coward, before adding, but she did astonishingly well. Wilder debated whether or not to reveal early on that the Cockney woman was indeed Dietrich, or wait until the end to spring the surprise. He shot Dietrich's scene in the telephone booth calling Sir Wilfred twice using both approaches. And what I've got to sell him, believe me, he'll want to buy. Wilder eventually decided it worked best to surprise the audience with the reveal at the end of the movie, and you saw that was consistent with the message on screen at the end, not to reveal the ending to anyone. There's some thought, though, that the choice to keep Dietrich's role secret cost her support for an Oscar because United Artists didn't promote the dual roles. It's certainly one of Dietrich's best performances. Witness for the Prosecution did pick up six nominations, including Best Picture, Best Director for Wilder, Best Actor for Lawton, and Best Supporting Actress for Elsa Lanchester, so magnificent as Lawton's nurse. That's it for me on this Christmas night. I'll see you tomorrow night, 8 p.m. Eastern. Until then, Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays from all of us at TCM.